Hello, welcome to my channel. This is the King's Tutor. Okay, if it's the first time of joining us. Please kindly like, comment, and share this video. Okay, today we want to see a um, seminar presentation in terms of research. If you are doing an undergraduate program or a master's program or a PhD program, and also in seminar or for thesis or for dissertation. Okay, so we want to see how you can present effectively to ensure you get your maximum marks. Okay, now in terms of a uh, seminar presentation, you should ensure that you have the first thing you should ensure you have gone through the work. Ensure you go through the work. Now, most mistake, uh, mistake most people make most times, uh, they tend to skim. Please ensure you go through the work, especially in terms of uh, your background of the study, your statement of the problem, and also your hypothesis. Very important, okay? So um, there are different aspects I will show, I will make a video about. But for now, let's see our seminar, how to present, basically, before we get to other things that you might uh, be asked likely in the presentation mode, okay? Now, um, before the presentation, ensure your slides are ready for PowerPoint. Ensure it is ready. If you've not done that and you want me to do that, please call that number shown on your screen. Okay, ensure you call that fast so that we um, ensure we put the slide together and I put it together on how to how to present effectively. Okay, now once you are called upon because uh, a lecturer involved uh, with other lecturers in the hall, once they call you to come, probably they will have a list in which they will call names accordingly. So once you get to the podium, okay, now the, the first thing you will hear from the lecturer in question will be, tell us about your work. That's the first thing you hear. Now what they're asking in that regard is for you to what, summarize your work because they have gone through, you have submitted your work. So definitely they have gone through, so they have some questions they would want to ask you. So they want you to first of all say that thing you've researched on. Okay, so um, the mistake most people do is to lie there, to waste time presenting. Please don't waste time presenting. Ensure you cover those work and ensure you get in detail, but fast as possible. Okay, now the first thing you do once you're called to the podium, say, tell us about your work. Now you get in there and you say, good afternoon all or good morning, depending. Don't start calling them one after the other. That's not, you don't, if there are 20 lecturers, you can't start calling them one after the other. Good afternoon all, or good afternoon ma'am, or good afternoon prof, good afternoon lecturers. Okay? Then you go, you get to your topic. You said, I want to present on the impact of this on this, the effect of this on this. Once you've talked, you've um, um, said your topic, now you enter the introduction immediately. And the slide you have to move as regards that. Okay, you get to the background of the study. Now, the background basically would be um, a relationship between the dependent and independent variable. Okay, so you just talk on the background briefly. Don't stay there. Just talk on the background. Now, you get to the statement of the problem. I'm telling you the step. First, the background. The next, you get to the statement of the problem because that is the essence of that research. Because if there is no problem, there is no need for research. So there was a problem that prompted that research. Okay? So you get your statement of the problem. Now you get after the research of the problem. Now I said it is on this backdrop that you want to do this research. Then immediately you go to your hypothesis. Don't bother about the objective or research question. Okay? If they have any question on that, because you already have your work, they will ask you. But know the research question and know the objective. But in terms of the presentation, so that you don't waste a lot of your time and the cuts too short. Okay? So, what you have to do is, um, for the statement of the problem, you said, based on the problem, the following hypothesis was formulated or we are formulated. You should know your hypothesis, very important, because that's one of the things most times they ask and people form. Once you don't know your hypothesis, it is assumed that you are not the one that researched it, that did the work. Okay? So from the previous statement of the problem, said the hypotheses were formulated. Now, if you, you are non-hypothesis only, don't list alternative hypotheses. 
there is no significant first one, there is no significant um, um, relationship between this and this. There is no between you leave the three. Immediately you go to your school. What is your research covering? Is it a, a company or a bank or a manufacturing company? Then the duration, how long? The duration, how long? Take note of what this is I'm saying. You say immediately, you are done. Don't get to um, the importance of the study that is in your work. Don't present that. Once you, from your school, get into chapter two immediately. Okay? You get to your conceptual framework. The conceptual framework basically is concept on your work. You should know that. If your work is on liquidity management, you should know what is liquidity. You should say that because most times they might ask you, they might jokingly ask you what is liquidity. And if you don't know that, definitely it means you don't want to research that. So the concept, conceptual framework, based on the concept, okay, you should define that. Immediately you go to your theoretical framework. You can just list out, not explain the theory. You can just say um, these are the theories that are based on this research. Um, stakeholder theory, this theory, then you go to your empirical. That's what you see in the empirical is um, different work was looked on and based on this, the work that was researched on, we found a gap. There should be a gap in literature, okay? You found a gap. Probably most of um, the topics that was done before was done, was foreign based or was on a particular industry. So yours now, you have to specify the gap, yours discovery, okay? That yours discovering a particular gap in literature. From there, you move straight to this, um, the methodology in chapter 3. You just say that you are using um, SPSS or EV in terms of your methodology. Just take that like that. You go to chapter 4. In chapter 4 now, what you, you talk about in terms of your presentation is that based on the analysis done, based on the analysis done, the findings are, that's the chapter 4 now, based on the analysis, the findings are, you list your findings. What are the findings? And those findings must be in consonant to your hypothesis. Okay? You find this, the first one, that there is a relationship between this and this. The second one, that there is no relationship between this and this. The third one, that there is no effect like that. Then the next thing, after you've done that of chapter 4, yes, in chapter 5, you conclude. That's conclusion. The based on the analysis, the conclusion from the research is thus that there is no significant relationship between this and this. Then the next one is recommendation. He said, it is recommended that you just do a recommendation. Thank you. You stop there. Don't say anything further. So any other thing that you want to um, ask based on that, they can now start asking you. That is why I said, before you go into that, ensure you've gone through the work. Okay? So in the next video, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to use um, a particular topic. A particular topic. Okay? So just comment below your topic. And if you want me to use that, comment below your topic. Okay? So I can use that as an example. Okay? Or other questions you are not um, cleared on. Comments below in my YouTube channel. Okay, so and also um, in the next video, I, I want to use um, um, There are sometimes they might ask what is the basis for your acceptance or rejection? Okay, now those questions is um, why are you accepting this and why are you rejecting it? You might ask that question then. So I will, I'm going to do that in the next um, um, video. Why you might accept or reject if your tabulated um, value you get from either your XPSS, that's the computer analysis, is greater than 0 0.05, then you have to what? reject, okay? I'm, I'm going to do that. So just drop your question in the comment word section, okay? So that's basically how you can what, present effectively. So that question they might ask, likely things they might ask, I'll do that in the next video, okay? Fast. So um, this channel is basically for uh, research and also things related to accounting. So if you want to further more, probably you've not done your professional as ICANN or Annan. And also you want to further more, ensure you subscribe to my channel for more like and comment, okay? And also if you have um, younger ones or colleagues that are in accounting department that are also um, doing research, that this will be beneficial to ensure you 
share this to them.